Junkie in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, and I'm coming to you from my studio in Old Town Lunenburg, out of my home that is open to the public, and you can find my address on my website if you would like to come visit me. Uh, on social media, you can find me on Instagram at The Hat Junkie, and on Facebook at The Hat Junkie, and uh, if you would like to subscribe to my mailing list, it is on my website www.hatjunkie.com and that is the best way to keep in touch with me because um, I don't have to rely on the algorithms of social media. I can just let you know what's going on and you will all receive it. So, welcome if you have not been here before. And um, today I am going to share some of my latest hats with you and what I've been working on in the knitting world. And I will take you on some pretty walks through Lunenburg and um, we will visit my favorite yarn shop in the world. And it happens to be right here in Lunenburg. And what else? We will also, yes, we're going to meet my friend Vanessa and see her beautiful artwork. So I hope you enjoy. Um, so for starters, it is, um, it is shameless self-promotion time. And um, since I do make hats for a living, I will take a few minutes and show you what I have been making. So the theme seems to be pink. Um, I love pink. I talked about it in my blog. Um, it's such a, a warm and vivid color and just entrenched with all kinds of weird um, politics, gender politics and history. And um, I find a lot of people won't wear pink because um, they feel it's too feminine if they're women or men and um, historically I find that so interesting because it was really only in the 1950s that pink became a female color before then at one point it was actually a male color and before then it was uh, neither you know it was equally worn by men and women so anyways here are some of my new pink hats uh, I am pretty much my favorite hats to make are my hand knit and felted hats. I make them from Canadian Dorset wool, wool and uh, many of them are, are um, naturally dyed. So for example this one I dyed with cochineal and then it's mixed with the uh, natural gray of the sheep. And yeah, they're so, so warm. Like I think you'd have to wear a fur hat to get something warmer than this. It's thick because after I've knit it really large, I shrink it down to size. Um, the flowers are wet felted uh, from Merino wool. And yeah, they're, they're resilient. They're so tough, which I think I always love in a hat. I don't, uh, way back in my early hat making days, um, I did more traditional millinery where you would buy a felt hood for hat making. Um, those hoods are made in factories and then I would shape it and you get, you can do all kinds of wonderful things and some milliners are just so creative. Um, but more and more as the years went on and it's been uh, 28 years. <laughs> more and more as the years went on what I discovered is I really love making my own fabric and I did a lot of wet felting hats and I still do that but what I love is a hat that you can you can just do that too and a hat that has a little bit of give and and then of course four years ago I started knitting and and I suppose it was just a natural evolution that I would sort of turn my knitting into felt. Um, one of the things I've been doing, which leads me to this next hat, which is also dyed with cochineal. And I have to say, I love this one. I would be really tempted to wear with the flowers in the front or, or just 
slightly off to the side there. Um, so one of the things is I love to sculpt the knitting, which is, um, you know, not really done in the knitting world. And it's kind of a, a millinery technique, but I've applied it to a, a different kind of fabric. So I think that's something else I'd like to do is just to take, take um, an unexpected uh, fabric and then do, do well, basically do what you wouldn't expect to do with a certain kind of fabric. Like um, for years and years I made polar fleece hats, which I still do some of, um, but they were so popular because I was taking a really sporty fabric and then doing something very romantic with it. So um, this, is, this is my all natural, uh, sustainable, evolution to my polar fleece hats. I really racked my brain for so long going, but what could I use? What could I substitute? And I realized it's, it's, you know, the best knit fabric is hand knit fabric because there's no waste at all. Um, you know, you're just working from the yarn, so you're not cutting up anything. And, um, and then it's all biodegradable and uh, and you know just strong I love it so here's my second one so this one has a little bit of an Edwardian vibe to it um, it looks really beautiful like with a you know collared coat um, yeah. so that's another one um, these are in my web shop uh, hatchunky.com you just go to shop and then you go to felt and knit hats okay so I realize that not everybody can uh, have wool next to their head so that leads me to this one and this is the very last in this color of these handwoven fabrics uh, from Mari Berkelar of Double Whale Handwoven um, I just love this I I always go, is it pink, is it purple? And I realize it is the Pantone color of 2023, which is magenta. That's the word, it's magenta. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you the back. So that little back, uh, aside from just being cute, actually is very functional because when you have a big shawl around your neck or a collar, often it'll just push the hat up in the back. And when it comes, to a point and tapered there, um, it doesn't do that. So will it stay up? Yeah, you can wear it up or down. And this one is also in my web shop under hand woven hats. Yeah, so what I do is I took Mari's fabric and um, she custom made these fabrics for me. Like we sat and picked the colors together and then I actually felted this one a little bit to make a really thick fabric and the inside is silk it's a silk cotton blend and it's so soft so I guess if you're allergic to wool it might be a problem but if you're not just thoroughly allergic and just a little sensitive these hats are, are an excellent excellent uh, way that you can wear wool is just to have a lining in there um, the linings don't really work on the knit hats I've tried, but long story. Um, lastly is something that I finished yesterday. Uh, it's actually not technically finished, but almost finished. And that's this one. I'm so excited about this shape. Uh, I can't quite tell you the era. I'm thinking 1940s, like uh, almost like you'd see it in, like children would wear this shape hat a lot. Um, and so it's garter stitch that it's been felted. And um, this is shaped with short rows if you are a knitter. And it's so warm and thick. And I just love that little, uh, <laughs> kind of vintagey, vintagey kids vibe. And what will come, uh, but hasn't come yet, is the little flower that goes on top. And this is going to get felted down, so 
if you see these little flowers here on this hat these ones have been felted so it gets a much denser and smaller so it'll it'll probably be almost half this size and it's just gonna go right there on the top of the hat so I'm super excited about that and now um, I'm gonna I actually made a little video a uh, very condensed video <laughs> everything's condensed because otherwise you'd be here for like hours and hours um, of how I make these little flowers I start by needle felting each petal their merino wool and then uh, I attach them to this little center ball and then I wet felt them uh, so yeah I hope you enjoy this video In knitting news, you might notice the sweater I'm wearing, which is my paper doll sweater by Kate Davies. And uh, I knit this a couple of years ago, at least. And I knit it as she has it, which is uh, she's got corrugated rib over here and the neckline comes up higher and the sweater goes quite is quite long uh, and she well I didn't do this but she is a short sleeve sweater and I will show you now and so I actually um, it was the one sweater that every time I wore it I talked about this either last time or the time before I just felt horrible um, I would just take a walk and I'd catch my reflection in some car <laughs> and I would just be like oh this is terrible so um, part of what I realized is I have broad shoulders, which I'm happy about, <laughs> and uh, but having a very cl closed neckline actually broadens my shoulders, so uh, I don't need them broadened. And um, I also thought that I could not wear a cropped sweater because I am kind of hippie, um, but actually I can it's just uh, it's a really cute look with a dress so let me show you maybe a funny angle I don't know um, 
yeah so the sleeves this is how I knit the sleeves and I cropped it to here it used to come down to here with waist shaping and that's part of the problem is this is a Mondim yarn so it's quite fine and uh, so all the lumps of clothing uh, and there wasn't much ease on it all the lumps of clothing would sort of show underneath so anyways I'm very pleased with it it's it's not really a winter sweater I'm just wearing it today but I think it'll um, be a go-to sweater in the summer over summer dresses so so happy to have this back in my life it really kind of breaks my heart when I when I knit something and then I find that I'm just not wearing it and yeah, so I've been trying to think why, and I, I have a few more things on my on my list of things to go back in and, and try to fix. So, um, yeah, I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Kate Davies' designs. Um, Kate Davies, is, if you don't know her, uh, if you're an avid knitter, you probably do know her, but um, if you don't, she's a... Um, a knitwear designer based in Scotland and she's amazing she's an amazing author and she's prolific she puts out so many books um, and has just wonderful thoughts on her blog Kate Davies designs KDD and Co is her website um, and uh, she's one of the few designers that I actually just love her patterns as they are like I found more and more as I've been knitting that I mostly want to do variations on a theme or or just my own designs it's sort of my way of being creative but when I look at her stuff it's like she just she just honed in on exactly what I want and it's she's just so I love I I totally mesh with her creativity so um so it's just about everything I just want to make it I'll show you um I made these last year last spring these were uh, one of my first projects with my hand spun yarn so the brown is hand spun Shetland and uh, that brown yarn that fiber was actually the reason I learned to spin because I bought it at Sisterhood Fibers in Tatamagoosh and I was like I love it so much I thought I was gonna felt it but then I'm like I have to spin that so that's what got me spinning and then of course my husband buying me my spinning wheel so yeah these are the green shoot mittens and uh, <laughs> little fiber fluffs everywhere and they're holding up very well I think I think because I spun the brown yarn a worsted spin which I've learned that that's much stronger than a woolen spin um, and I I changed one little thing and this is just because I was using a sport weight yarn, um, the pink is, is from Bartlett Woolen Mills, and this is a uh, lichen and lace uh, rustic heather. So yeah, like I just shortened, I took one, one little leaf motif off of each in order to fit it into, you know, in order to make it fit me. Um, I'll show you her original pattern. So this book, my son got me that for Christmas. I told him exactly what I wanted and I highly recommend this. Just never, <laughs> you can't be too clear enough. Uh, I am I know, you know, that whole surprise element, I don't need it. I'm just, I'm so happy if I just say, this is exactly what I want. <laughs> Please get this for me. Um, so yeah, the mittens, the green shoot mittens there. Isn't that sweet? And I will show you what I am aiming to make. And that's her Kufel sweater. Um, except mine is gonna be different. Uh, I'm gonna turn it into a cardigan. So I'm gonna put a steek down the middle and cut it. I also plan to use my own yarn that I'm spinning. So it's gonna take a while. <laughs> I probably have enough for a sleeve right now uh, and I'd also like to put some kind of a little um, small pattern on the body just just to make it fun to knit sometimes that uh, uh, too much stockinette plain stockinette can well if I'm reading a good book it's okay but otherwise I get I get a little bit bored so it's more fun for me to have a little pattern on there 
Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm aiming for with my local Shetland wool. And let's see, what else am I knitting? Uh, I mostly have been knitting my little blanket squares. I, I started off, it started off, this is, and this is another pattern with me. Sometimes I give myself a little challenge, like I didn't, didn't like to knit socks. And I said, oh, I'm just gonna keep knitting socks until I like to knit socks. <laughs> I think there's a stubbornness here that you might be seeing and I did and I hated it the first like I was so stressed out and then and then it just clicked and suddenly I was a sock knitter and now it's like I've I just figured it out you know but there was there was a lot of angst and sorrow until I got to the point of being happy about sock knitting but now I really do love sock knitting and so the same was happening with these blankets I love blanket squares that I'm knitting my blanket, which I showed a couple episodes back. Um, at first, I loved making the little squares and hated putting them together. And then I dropped it for a while. And that was because of three needle bind off. And then I just said, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. And I pushed myself until now, like that three needle bind off just doesn't feel so horrible anymore. And that's what happens, your body your muscles teach yourself like it's a muscle memory you just suddenly you know one day you do something that works and your your brain remembers that one little thing and but it takes time so uh, I have been just making my little squares and I just love I feel like each one well first of all I love using up the scrap yarn and I have a lot of scrap yarn um, but um, I, I, find like each, I find that each one is like a little painting and the other thing is they're not all exactly the same size and I know if you're very uh, like mathematical that might drive you nuts but there's slight variations in the weight of the yarn and it doesn't matter like you know sometimes it's, it'll be a little bit bubbly but it's a blanket so here for example these guys are put together and um, it'll just like when, when one is lar one strand of yarn is a little larger, it'll pull it in a little. And, but it's kind of a, a whimsical thing. And to me, it's worth it to use up all this. Like I don't only knit with one, one uh, weight of yarn. So yeah, and, and this, like I love this. So this is a skein of yarn that I bought when I first started knitting. And, I loved how it looked in the skein. It was the very first hand dyed yarn that I bought. And then when I knit with it, I despised it <laughs> and started so many projects and ripped them all out. But I've discovered that in garter stitch in these small amounts, it's so cute. <laughs> um, like here's some other, like I just don't, I'm not really a, a painted yarn person. I like to make my own I like to make my own color combinations as I'm knitting with uh, color work. So this was another one that kind of bothered me. I mean, it's so cute and so well done, but I love it in these little garter stitches. So now I just want more of these hand dyed yarns. <laughs> so there's my blanket. And, and yeah, in case you're wondering, this is, uh, I bought this knitting project bag at the Lunenburg Farmer's Market. I don't know the woman's name, but, but her company is Jelly Roll Cupboard Quilts. And I know she's on Etsy, Jelly Roll Cupboard Quilts. I'll try to find the link and put it down in the show notes. Um, yeah, just so cute. And that's another thing, like I haven't really been good at like project bags, I always see them, but I end up putting my things in Ziploc bags. <laughs> but, oh my God, it's, it's kind of so lovely to have this bag that you just pull out. It makes me happy. So, and there were more that I wanted. And last off in my knitting is this little guy, which is a pattern that I have been wanting to knit for so long. Um, it's called the Pinwheel Mitt by Ella Austin. She designed it for Loop London. And I am making it from 
two of my hand spun yarns. So this one here is my local Lunenburg County North Country Cheviot Sheep that I dyed with indigo. And this one I blended. Uh, it was Corydale and I blended it with little bits of merino on my blending board. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So partly this is a test because I've been dyeing a lot of indigo uh, yarn, but I haven't done, haven't had the opportunity to do a lot of knitting with it. So um, I, one thing that happens with natural indigo is called crocking. And that's where, um, because unlike other dyes, natural dyes, um, where the, um, the colors chemically bond with a mordant to the fiber, uh, with indigo it's different, it's a stain. And indigo, like the old natural indigo genes, that you'll see how they get like whitish in some parts and that's because they rub off. Um, and that's what happens over time is indigo will rub off, but it, it's very slow and it depends of course where it is. Like if it's on a hat, it's not gonna rub off. Uh, you know, if it's on a high abrasion area, then it, you will see that kind of indigo fading, which is actually really beautiful. But one thing that happens as you're knitting is, um, yeah, well, I, no, you can't really see it, but you actually, it sort of rubs off on your hands as you're knitting. <laughs> so that's a new experience and it's totally natural. Like I've looked it up, it's just what happens. And, um, and, and I think it slows down after a while. So at the beginning when it's a new, you know, newly dyed, you'll see it more. So um, I looked up even toxicity and it doesn't seem to be toxic at all. Um, so yeah, you just have to kind of know that there's gonna be blue on your hands as you're knitting and then you wash it off <laughs> and it washes off very easily. So yeah, I'm experimenting and then, uh, you know, to see like if, if I'm going to end up with blue on my hands as I wear them or if I can completely get it out after I soak the mittens we will see but I need to know these things if I'm actually selling my my yarn which leads me to my next video because um, I I had a batch of my naturally dyed yarn and I brought it down to my favorite yarn shop which is Mariner's Daughter Yarn in Lunenburg and uh, I took a little video of the of the yarn shop. It's such a sweet, sweet store. It's small, um, but they have just the most beautiful, like natural yarns, and they have a great aesthetic. Faye and Hannah, it's a mother and daughter team, and they have a wonderful aesthetic of uh, like putting things together in displays. And um, so every time I go in there, it's just like a feast, a feast for my eyes, and and. Uh, it's dangerous for me to go in because I always end up buying something and I don't need anything. I know this is a common problem, but um, I can't help myself. It's like I, I literally can't help myself. I would, I would steal food out of my child's mouth to buy another skein of yarn. It's terrible. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoy the video.
So one other thing that I knit recently, um, and I did post it on social media, um, is this very cute little hat for my friend Vanessa. Vanessa is my neighbor, fairly new neighbor, and we've become really good friends. And um, she's my walking buddy. Uh, and she uh, she's an amazing human. She was a doctor, family doctor, and um, she decided she wanted to uh, follow her dream and uh, of making her art and writing, and she does both beautifully. Um, her artwork is just just gorgeous, and she recently had a show with a couple of other artists. Um, lino cuts that's what she does she does these beautiful lino cuts and uh so lunenberg's been full of shows lately and concerts and i don't always get to them but i did get to this one and i was so glad so um i'm going i took a little video and you will see vanessa's beautiful work her name's vanessa mckeel and uh, I will put her website in the show notes and she's uh, her cards are available at Chicory Blue and many other stores um, but you can also just email her off her website if you would like one of her prints um, she doesn't have like an online shop or anything but she can easily ship out whatever you would like um, yeah, so hope you enjoy seeing her work. And then at the very end, you will see the hat that I made her, which I think it won't be the last one uh, in that style. Hope you enjoy. At the end of the last video, what you saw was a stretch of the Back Harbor Trail where, um, where there's just like a tunnel of birch trees. And every time, I actually walk this with Vanessa a lot, and every time I get to that point, and I know I'm not alone, it's just, it's like you just have this ah moment where you're like, that's so beautiful, just the way the birches make this curve. So hope you enjoyed seeing that. And I did take one other video of a walk through Lunenburg. 
One of the things I love about walking through Lunenburg is there's, Lunenburg is just the land of details. And as you can see, I love detail. And uh, so I can just go on so many different walks <laughs> within this four square kilometers and just see so many different things. And, and that's what I do. I just mix it up all the time. So it's kind of a never ending show of details. So I hope you enjoy this last video and um, thank you so much for being here. Please don't forget if you enjoyed this video to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe. These are the little things that helps YouTube know that you care and that they should show more people my videos. <laughs> so um, if you are coming to Lunenburg, please come and visit me in my shop and or just take a, take a look in my virtual shop, hatjunkie.com. It's been lovely spending time with you and I will see you after the holidays. Bye!